Okay, I did want to shoot a video on pain, physical pain in the body, and and chronic chronic pain in the body and suffering, and my own experiences having gone through kidney failure, gout pains, uh, extreme exhaustion over long periods of time, operations, uh, various things to do with pain, and 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 also asthma, all kinds of ongoing physical health challenges, over extent. Now. But also in relation to pain and the contextualization of how to see it. And um, so I'm going to talk, um, and please just take what you want, leave the rest from this video if it's unhelpful. Uh, and I do understand that some of my content will be very confusing to people, because at the level of non-duality, at the level of the infinite, there is no pain, and uh, there is no individual suffering pain, and there is no suffering. So sometimes I speak like that, like in the infinite, there is no pain, there never was pain. And that's true at that level. However, in the level of the of, of identified duality, there is such thing as pain and suffering uh, and uh, various uh, things that go on. Uh, and also this thing of like, um, if you're not in the infinite, for me, I mean, this one is not in the infinite and one's experience is that of duality. So that that's real. I mean, if you're in duality, saying that you're in the infinite is not really real for me. Um, you know. Um, so <clears throat> if you're in the infinite and say there is no pain, that's true. But if you're not in the infinite and say there is no pain and suffering, for me, it's not really a truth at a certain level. You know, because one is identified with the body in physical pain and suffering, suffering existence. Now, okay, so I just want to frame that because, you know, I, I get people saying, well, yesterday, last week you said um, pain doesn't exist, and now you're talking like pain does exist. And it just, it, I mean, it's it's difficult because you're speaking to different audiences at different levels of consciousness. So different things apply at different levels. Um, you know, like I wouldn't talk to, to Buddha about physical pain in the body. It would be total, a total nonsense. Um, and, um, okay. So, um, yeah, so if I'm um, just shooting a video so people could stay on mute while I'm recording, that'd be great. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to talk about karma. Uh, so while one, you know, basically you could say karma, the separation or duality is a consequence of um, still being identified, still choosing duality still choosing to identify with duality i.e physical body pain the idea of a me the idea of a you uh, the idea of a me experiencing so while that still continues one is in the loop of um, separation one does actually is going to continue i mean i agree with buddha to to experience duality is to suffer on some level you know to suffer the body to suffer in to being an individual existence separated from other existence, to have some level of both um, psychological and spiritual guilt at being in separation from the infinite. So all of those things, um, all of those things are being experienced, i.e., what one would call suffering. Now, there's different levels of consciousness. I mean, you know, one can have gross suffering. That's usually strong levels of both spiritual and physical and psychological guilt uh, and huge identification with the body and karmic patterns. Also, I, I'm going to talk about things which are um, karma to try and help be helpful to those who suffer pain and suffering. Um, now, in um, as Buddha said, you know, one is reincarnating and one has the karma of one's past lives, which one can't remember. And often, if you could get flashbacks like Hawkins did to past lives as things happened to him, then everything would reveal itself as to why sometimes, even though you are aware of spiritual tools, you can't get rid of stuff um, that quickly. It's almost like there is a karmic clock which blocks you from um, getting out that easily um, until, until that karmic clock is undone sometimes. So even though you know what to do, uh, you sort of do the prayer and you go and you do the observer and it doesn't work. Uh, 
and sometimes it does work and sometimes it doesn't work and that could be due to you sometimes see your past lives or you do uh, you can do either either kinesiologic research on your past lives or you can do um past life hypnotherapic reg regression to see so for example let's say you've got this ongoing i don't know uh burning pain um what is it that's going on for years or months and you go well sometimes i do the observer and it's gone and sometimes i do a prayer and i cancel it and it vanishes and sometimes it comes back again and this other person did it and it never came back um and then um <clears throat> if you could i mean it's not they always say not to compare you know if that person goes back into their past lifetimes they're probably you know they might have been a uh, uh, you know, it might have been a saint or something, um, helping others and or being a doctor or something, alleviating pain, and they don't get much pain. And then one looks into uh, your past life, and you see you're you're out there tormenting. You you are the local torturer for the, <laughs> for the king. You know, 18th century medieval England, and you are hired as the uh, as the prison torturer. Uh, and then you you have your past lifetime, and then the king goes like, um, make sure you get all, you know, make sure they get their due, you know, they tried to rebel against my kingdom, um, so just uh, give them the whole run of torture for the next few years, uh, torture them every day. So in this lifetime, you know, you get, you, I mean, you sort of cancel your belief in pain, and you go to the observer, and it seems like it didn't go away in one second, and you go, well, this is unfair. I mean, you know, um, uh, there's this other guy in the group and he just cancelled it once and went to the observer and he's blissed out uh, for the rest of his life. And I, I, I sort of cancel it, go to the observer, it keeps coming back. This is unfair. What's wrong with me? So for me, it's like, um, so in my own spiritual work, um, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, sometimes if I get something, uh, like right at the moment, there's a, a sinus infection in the nose you know they're breathing so I, you know I, I do various things i cancel my belief in a sinus infection that's not real i'm an infinite being i'm not subject to such a belief as a sinus infection and a blocked nose uh, but i also okay, i can do the anti-karma prayer i pray for forgiveness for the you know i can intuit what the karma is i did to others why is it this sinus infection sticking around i pray to god for forgiveness for the one in me who suffocated others in this lifetime and others I pray to God for forgiveness for the one in me who tortured others in this lifetime and others. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who strangled others in this lifetime and others. Now, uh, I, I don't remember strangling and torturing anyone in this lifetime, but I can um, I can suspect. And why doesn't it go away that quickly? I mean, some people will say, well, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. But on some level, though, yeah, that's true. And that is very helpful. However, if it doesn't go away in one second and you're not in an enlightened sage in a millisecond, um, you know, they, to help in letting go, one can see that there might be karmic patterns which make it not always that simple to let something chronic, uh, a huge chronic illness go. Now, on some level, you can cancel that I said that. But, um, you know, just for those who do some spiritual work and it takes a bit longer to clear something, for me, it's just the acceptance. So what does that mean for me? It's just like, well, you know, I'll, I'll cancel and I'll observe. And whether it goes straight away or not, it's not important. To just keep, my allegiance is to just keep clearing and to be in service to the infinite. Uh, but it's not to, and to accept, to accept, um, to accept um, that sometimes some things go quickly and sometimes some things go slowly. But um, it's not necessarily I'm doing anything wrong. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter because my thing is just to keep my allegiance to the infinite and dissolving, and um, and to doing the uh, and to being that which the infinite would have me be. So I just wanted to share that for those who might get frustrated around pain and why it doesn't go away in half a day or something, never to come back again. I also found it very helpful with Hawkins saying there's um there's units of things to have to there's units of grief that have to be felt out like one might I might have a hundred units of grief I just need to cry them all out before I'm free of it forever 
I may have a hundred units of um, pain, you know, that I just might have to experience out and just um, before the, that pain clock is, is undone. So not, not to go into big moan about it, but he does say they come to an end and that has been my experience. You know, I could intuitively see that with grief, you know, um, before um, when my pet pigeon died, when I was in active addiction, food addiction, as soon as my pigeon pet pigeon died, um, I ate a big pan of potatoes with butter to to block out the grief. I didn't want to cry, so that that's accumulating repressed emotions. But in um, uh, once I came into addiction recovery uh, and my mother died, you know I didn't use any addiction and I spent extreme raw pain you know the death moment but i didn't eat any food on it or try and avoid it and it did go quite quickly not uh but it was the first time i went through cold turkey uh through the grief and then then later my father died and there wasn't that much it was like that it was just like hawkins said the reservoir of grief without addiction uh, becomes easier and quicker and so it is with pain and various things so some things go to go quickly slowly best not to compare to others and also to to accept or if if one is really like uh, upset that things are taking longer um, if you want to visit your local past life hypnotherapist or kinesiologist with the one exception my ca caveat to people who go to hypnotherapists and kinesiologists is anyone below integrity uh, would not be helpful to any spiritual seeker, and probably a lot of them are below integrity. So if a hypnotherapist and a kinesiologist are after your money and not interested in serving a higher purpose, um, I would avoid them, and they can't give you good results anyway. Uh, they're probably just speaking a lot of bullshit for your money anyway. So with that caveat, I'll stop the video there.